V1. Rotate. Why do the pilots call out V1 rotate? Why does the captain remove his or her hand from the thrust levers just as V1 is being called out? And what would happen if an aircraft would decide to reject the takeoff after V1? You are very welcome to another episode on the Mentor Pilot channel and I hope that you're doing absolutely fantastic. Stay tuned. This video is brought to you in cooperation with Brilliant. Now, I am really proud to have Brilliant as a sponsor, and I've always been. And the reason for that is because I know that their way of teaching you physics, maths, algorithms is really, really effective. The reason I know that is because I have been using Brilliant together with my 10-year-old son, Lucas. Now, he has really loved using both the app, actually, and their website for they're brain puzzles, right? They're really tricky, really interactive brain puzzles. And he was sitting there trying to solve them. And if he comes across something that he cannot solve, well, then he will just click on the little explanation note. They will give a really good explanation to how to think to solve that puzzle. He'll go in, he'll try it again, and next time he will solve it. And this is exactly the same way as we are teaching in the cockpit as well. If I fly with a cadet who doesn't understand a specific procedure, well then I'll go in, I will explain why it is done that particular way, and the next time they will ace it. So, for those of you who are interested in checking out Brilliant, you can use the link here below. It's completely free to go and check out Brilliant, but if you want to sign up for a year, then you'll get a 20% discount if you use this link in the uh, description of the video. So, check it out. Okay guys, so today I'm going to be talking about V-speed. Specifically, we're going to talk about V1, liftoff, rotate, and V2, okay? But these are not the only V-speeds out there. In fact, Ikao has defined 46 different V-speeds, and I'm not going to go through them, I promise. Uh, the reason that we are so into different speeds when it comes to aviation is just because a lot of the safety of the aircraft is defined by different speeds. All right. The aircraft obviously needs a certain amount of air to flow over its wings in different configurations in order to be safe. And this is what we see in our indicated airspeed. Essentially, the amount of air that's flowing over the wings. But in the case of the takeoff, it's slightly different. And that's because in the takeoff, we have to take into consideration how much runway we have. Right? And the amount of speed that the aircraft carries is extremely important because of the different scenarios that might happen during the takeoff. So when we are taking off, there are essentially three different questions we need to have an answer to. The first one is, can I, with my aircraft, with two engines operating, take off and be at 35 feet at the end of the runway with a margin of 15%? So we need to have the available runway, we need to be able to do that with two engines, and we need to have a 15% safety margin. That's the case, that's great. The second thing we have to ask ourselves is that what if something happens, specifically an engine failure? And the reason we're looking at engine failures is because it will have a huge impact on the overall performance of the aircraft. So there are two different things that can happen if we have an engine failure. Either we can decide at a specific speed to reject the takeoff, because of the engine failure, but then we need to put the brakes on, we need to get the aircraft to stop within the available runway distance. That makes sense. The second scenario is, well, at what speed can I get an engine failure and then continue the aircraft accelerating up to a speed where we can actually take off and achieve a screen height of 35 feet at the end of the runway? So these are the three different things, the three different questions that we need to have an answer to. So the last two questions that we cover there, that's why we have V1, right? V1 is often referred to as a decision speed or a critical engine failure speed. Now, decision speed is not really accurate because, in fact, the decision of what you want to do, if you want to continue or if you want to reject the takeoff, has to be made by V1, all right? You cannot start taking that decision at V1. It's already too late. And that's why when you see in a cockpit that the captain, who is the one that decides to reject or to continue, removes his or her hand as they hear V1, 
That's because at that speed, the decision has been made. If they're here, we won, and they haven't had a failure before that point, they're now con committed to the takeoff. Right? They are going to take off no matter what happens, within brackets. And the reason I say within brackets is because I have continuously had a lot of questions about this. What if you have a dual engine failure after we won? Will you, re will you um, reject the takeoff? Now, if you, if you think about it, the answer to that is fairly obvious. Yes, you will reject the takeoff. For the simple reason that without any engine on a 737, it cannot fly, it cannot accelerate. So the only option you have is to reject. But what you do have to understand is that if the crew decides to reject the takeoff after we won, you will not have enough runway to stop the aircraft, right? You will have what we call a runway excursion, which means that you are rolling off the end of the runway and into terrain, terrain beyond, okay? So that's basically what V1. The definition of V1 is it's the latest time of which the crew have to have initiated the rejected takeoff actions in order to get the aircraft to stop within the available runway. But it is also the earliest time that the crew can decide to continue the takeoff, rotate and achieve a screen height of 35 feet by the end of the active runway. Now, how is that calculated then? Well, here is where your understanding of physics becomes really important and another reason why I'm so happy that Brilliant is the sponsor of this video. Because we're gonna to have to start to think about different things here and we'll start with the weight of the aircraft, the mass of the aircraft. So if you have an aircraft that is very light, for example, as that aircraft accelerates, uh, it will have a fairly comparably low amount of energy. If the same aircraft has a higher weight, so more passengers on board, for example, as it accelerates and it achieves the same speeds, it will have more energy. So this means that a heavier aircraft is going to have to decide to reject at a lower speed in order to, for the brakes to be able to, to kind of absorb all of that energy and that get the aircraft stopped within the available runway. So if you have a diagram of this with speed on one end and mass on the other, the, the diagram is going to have to show a line that goes down as the mass increases. So lower speed with a higher mass. But on the other hand, you are also going to have to have a look at what if we want to continue the takeoff. And that's opposite. It means with a higher mass, you are going to need a higher speed in order to, um, to take off safely. So in the same diagram, there's going to be a line that will increase show higher speed as the mass increases. This means that at some point, these two lines are going to intersect each other. When they intersect, you have your normal V1 for that given weight. So as the weight changes, these lines are gonna move and the intersection is gonna move and that's why V1 changes. And it changes with the weight of the aircraft, but it also changes with the runway length. If you have a longer runway, it means that the accelerate stop distance is not going to be as critical, right? So that will also lead you to believe that the status of the runway, as in whether the runway is dry, wet or slippery, is also going to have uh, an impact on this. Because if you think about it, if you are trying to take off from a runway that is slippery, for example, well, in that case, the accelerate stop distance, when you decide to reject the takeoff until you actually get the aircraft stop, is going to be longer. So that would lead you to believe that the V1 speed would have to be lower, okay? Because you need to decide at the lower speed to reject the takeoff in order to get the aircraft stopped. So this is why if you are watching cockpit videos, for example, you might sometimes hear that the pilots call out V1 and then it's a long wait until you hear rotate. That's when you have a wet runway or a slippery runway. Sometimes V1 and rotate comes almost at the same point and that's because the runway state is not limiting on that occasion. So now we know why the captain removes his or her hand from the thrust lever as they hear V1. And the call V1, this is really important, has to be made so that it's finished by V1. We cannot start calling V1 as we pass the speed. You have to start before you reach the speed because the decision has to be taken 
at that point, the latest. The next thing that's going to come is VR, rotate. Um, that's the speed where there is enough air flowing over the wings to achieve the sufficient amount of lift for the aircraft to fly. So VR is where V1. you start to rotate the aircraft. You can see it by the nose coming off the ground. And sometimes if it's moist outside, you might see uh, vortexes coming off the wings. And that's because we're starting to take lift out from the wings. So VR, that's the speed, right? You hear rotate, we initiate rotation speed, and then you go up to VLOF, which is the lift off speed. That's different from VR because it takes a while from the aircraft to, to actually rotate up to an attitude where it goes airborne. During that time, the aircraft will continue to accelerate. And then you have V2. Now V2 is the best angle with one engine out climb speed. Right? It's the climb speed that we want to try to achieve if we've lost one engine and we're trying to climb away. That's the speed that we need to have achieved by the threshold at 35 feet. And then we need to keep that going to at least 400 feet. But in the case of the 737, our minimum approved speed is V2 to V2 plus 20, which we keep until it's time to start retracting the flaps and we're accelerating for flap retraction. All right? So now you know a little bit about that, but in fact, there are, like I was saying in the beginning of the video, 46 different speeds. Now, I won't be explaining those 46 speeds for you, but I will have them scrolling here. And while they're scrolling here, and you can see all of these 46 beautiful speeds scrolling by, I'm going to take the time to show you some of my merchandise, which I hope that you guys know about. So you will see links to some of the merchandise, like for example, my Boeing or Airbus or Antonov or Diamond teams, right? I've made a team for basically any type of aircraft manufacturer out there and you can reach them by using the link below. I've also done several other types of t-shirts. So for example, my warning will not stop talking about aviation if asked t-shirt, which is this one or my Inop C Techlog t-shirt. Uh, I have my Positive Attitude t-shirt and I have many, many others. So if you're interested in that, I'm going to link to my Teespring store up here where you can go and check them out or the, the pictures down here um, if you're watching this on YouTube. Basically, go and check it out. A huge thank you to the sponsor of this episode, which is brilliant. It's a really great tool. Consider going down, checking out 20% discount if you do. Make sure that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted a little notification bell so you don't miss any of my live streams or spontaneous videos that I send out. Have an absolutely fantastic day wherever you are and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Right guys, I really hope that you liked that. If you want more content like that, more aviation content, well then, check this out. Uh, I hope that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. See you inside of the Mentor Aviation app and have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye-bye.